Hello, welcome. Today I'll share some about the city's old produce district. It sat just off the Embarcadero along Washington, Jackson, and Pacific Streets. The time period I've modeled is of the post-war years into the 1950s, although its history reaches back many decades. The district sat upon the filled-in area of Yerba Buena Cove. With the gold rush of 1849, many ships would anchor in the cove, but many of these would be abandoned as their crews would join the rush to the gold fields up in the hills in hopes of striking it rich. And as many wharves would be constructed out into the cove to reach the influx of shipping, the cove itself would be filled in bit by bit providing much demanded real estate for businesses eager to set up shop. Many abandoned ship would find themselves being filled in upon right where they were anchored. Quickly repurposed, these hulls would become shops and warehouses, with one actually becoming a city jail. But eventually, the entire cove would be filled in out to a new seawall which would be, become the Embarcadero. The area quickly became a wholesale district for produce that would be shipped in from the many agricultural areas of California and from ports far away. The district was composed of more than a dozen city blocks around the area of Washington and Davis streets. For the most part, these businesses set up shop in the many one- and two-story buildings of the area, all built or rebuilt following the Great Earthquake and Fire of 1906. Below the Appraisers Building up on Sansom Street, the district would cross Front, Davis, and Drum Streets down to the Embarcadero. And while large office buildings were being built over on Market Street, just several blocks away, this part of town, with its one- and two-story buildings, would continue to carry on in its wholesale produce trade for many, many years. As trucking would become the prevalent form of transportation, the district would see hundreds of trucks converge there each day in the very early pre-dawn hours. Many a trucker would have started their journey to market very late at night, having left the farm the night before. Truckloads from near and far would arrive with fresh produce each morning, their truckers hoping that an early arrival would garner the best price for their goods. With freshness, besides a crop's ripeness and flavor being of paramount importance, their produce would need to be traded in a most timely manner. And this, of course, meant that the district would become quite the beehive of activity each day, starting in the very early hours of the day. Everything from apples and artichokes to yams and zucchini was sold. To say that the district would get busy would be an understatement in its actual state of almost total gridlock at times. And while trucks would move in and out of the area, it was never an easy affair. And, try as they might, even the beat cops of the area could hardly help in the effort to keep things moving, although I must conclude they must have enjoyed an apple or two as they tried. And, to further add to the problem of mobility, the Municipal Railway's Union Street E-Line streetcar would dutifully show up on cue to further exacerbate the scene of a world that was very convoluted at this hour. As the morning hours would give way to midday, the hustle and bustle of the area begins to let up as the many trucks slowly clear the streets. The Union Street streetcar finds that it's easy sailing once again as it runs outbound down Jackson Street on its way out to Cal Hollow in the Presidio. Though the alleyways are clearing up, there are still many cars in the area as individual shoppers will now ply the district 
looking for bargains on less than grateful amounts of produce that had not been traded for that day. And certainly, all of these shoppers are feeling lucky to have found a place to park so close to the markets. Who knows? If their luck can hold, they may find some real good deals. But the last of the trucks are now being loaded with empty or damaged crates, as well as produce that no one wanted. Always such a shame to see so much go to waste. So, as the afternoon hours would fall on the district, things would quiet down a bit, and the district could catch his breath for a short while, waiting for the next busy day. Here is a shot of the California State Belt Railroad's Alco S2 number 20. It's from an old black and white film, noirish movie called Thieves Highway. Granted, the movie is a bit hokey as films go, but it is absolutely great in how it shows the old produce district and tells of its story here in town. Got to admit, it's one of my favorites. Now, the real belt didn't have trackage through the produce district per se, but I model it here on the layout for the opportunity for some great street running and switching. So, I'll include some shots as the district has cleared out enough now to allow the Alco some running room. As things have opened up in the streets once again, the belt could come alive and go about its task of servicing the various businesses just off the waterfront. But, just as in real life, the belt often had a tough time getting through some of its trackage as cars and trucks would often be in the way. Just a couple of blocks away, however, the real Bell did serve many a customer below Telegraph Hill, and the street conditions were quite similar in their challenges. So, I'll give you a few more shots of my State Belt Railroad on Washington Street here. Hope you enjoy them. Coming to the final chapter here, in the late 50s and early 60s, the produce district would be seen as a top target for an urban renewal project. I suppose there were many reasons for this. Very surely, the district had become quite inefficient as a marketplace. With its daily near gridlock congestion, it was no longer the ideal location to work such a large wholesale trade operation. Indeed, the fact that much produce would end up as spoiled, not being able to be sold, and only to be hauled off as garbage, did not encourage its future. But more obviously than that was the fact that the acreage was becoming too valuable to remain as a cluster of old warehouses. That only contributed to the urban blight that so many took low opinion of. So, with that, the district would be no more. Block by block, the old buildings would come down. Some streets would disappear altogether as urban renewal would come to this area of town below the appraiser's building. Washington Street would be totally transformed. As was Davis Street. And the view down Drum Street to the Matson Building would forever change. And a look down Davis Street to 
for the PG&E building and Matson building would change quite significantly. Today, you can't see either one, but you can see the Salesforce skyscraper, which is the tallest building in town. And Jackson Street, looking quite different from its past, in a view of our famous pyramid. But for me, I prefer the old. The old Colombo market is a thing of the past, almost. Today, the archway has been left standing providing a new gateway to a very nice park named after Sidney Walton. And as much as I like the park, I think I'd still prefer the old marketplace. But that's just me.